So guys, what's going on? Guys, I want to respond to some of um, some of you guys on about Casemiro and Inoue. Uh, a lot of you are saying, well, you know, you don't feel that Cas uh, Inoue can knock out Casemiro. Uh, I totally... Here's the thing. Casemiro might be a hard guy. He might have a granite chin. Or this is what you, a lot of you said, that Casemiro's got a granite chin and you don't think Inoue can knock him out. Um, firstly, Casemiro's coming up. He hasn't fought a puncher like Anue. Um, I think I think we're what we're doing is we're buying too much into that um, Zalani Tete fight. Listen, Zalani Tete was a great win for Casemiro, but let's not forget Casemiro was an underdog against Zalani Tete. And Zalani Tete wasn't exactly he's was a good fighter, but he wasn't exactly a killer. He had three or four losses before that win. So, he, but you listen, you got to give him respect. He went over to the UK and beat Zelani Tete. So, respect for that. But Anue is a completely different animal. If you think Anue is going to come in and fall over, and that's that's not happening. Anue has proven himself against Nanito Dene, a much harder puncher than John Raul Casemiro. A much harder puncher. It's just physics. He's a lot bigger than Casemiro. He punches harder. And also, let's not forget, Nanito Dene was is a Hall of Famer. He might be old, he's a Hall of Famer. Uh, Casemiro is no Hall of Famer. He hasn't done anything in the sport to be a Hall of Famer. You know, maybe if he beats Anue and then goes on to do more great things and beat more great fighters, he may then have a case for himself. Right now, he's nowhere near being a Hall of Famer. Nanito Dene is a Hall of Famer. Anue just beat a Hall of Famer. I don't care how old he is. He just beat a top guy who I believe would beat Casemiro. I believe Dene would beat Casemiro. I, I I believe Daenerys still got enough in the tank, right, that, to beat him. Um, and I, I I don't agree with you guys. I just don't agree with you guys. I, I think Anuwe will stop him. Uh, I can't see Casemiro going 12 rounds with, with Anuwe. I just don't. Uh, I, I think, you know, a lot of you keep saying Daenerys, but Daenerys big. Daenerys coming down. Daenerys a big boy. He's a big, big boy. You know, um, and Casemiro's not. Casemiro's quite small. Uh, so I don't see Casemiro being able to su survive 12 rounds. I would be surprised if Casemiro goes 12 rounds against Anue. I would. Uh, that's honest to God truth. And that's not taking anything away from Casemiro. I just think Anue's a beast. He's a beast. And I, I, I don't think... And the thing is... I can't even sit here and say, well, you know what? Casemiro's got a puncher's chance because I saw Anue take Daenerys big punches and Casemiro don't punch harder than Daenerys. Like I said, it's not physically possible because Daenerys a big dude. He's coming down. He's a big man. And I know Daenerys a, a knockout artist. He's been like that throughout his career. He's got a one-punch KO. He's a one-punch KO guy. He punches really, really hard. For me... Casemiro doesn't have that kind of punching power or doesn't have Daenerys punching power. So personally, I can't see, I can't see, you know, Casemiro being able to knock Anue out because I've seen how tough Anue is. Uh, but I can definitely see Anue stopping uh, Casemiro. Listen, if, if, if Casemiro proves me wrong, I'll hold my hand up and say, fair enough. But it's, I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening. I think uh, Casemiro is a massive underdog for the right reason. Uh, he, I don't think he's got a, a great chance in this fight. If I'm honest, I think all the, I think, I think Anuwe is favoured in all aspects. I think he's quicker. I think he punches harder. Uh, I think he, I think he, he may even be tougher. Uh, I, I, I don't see any, I don't see any aspect. Casemiro is better than Anuwe. Casemiro's a good fighter, but Anuwe is just better than him in every every department. He's just better than him in every department. And I can't see Casemiro going 12 rounds. And if he does, I think he's going to take a, a valicious beating. I think he's going to take a, a bad beating because Anuwe, uh, even Dene took a quite a big beating in that fight. He got knocked down. He was hurt. He was swollen. Face was messed. Um, so, and that's big Anuwe. That's big Dene. Um, this is small Casemiro, so I don't know. I I can't see him winning. I can't see Casemiro winning. But you know, boxing's an unpredictable sport. But I think Anuwe is just a lot better than him personally. Uh, but if you guys disagree, leave your thoughts. Uh, you know, I'm always open to debate. Leave your thoughts, guys and guys. Remember to please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. So, guys, what's going on? Oscar De La Hoya slams shut.
the rematch between Canelo and Floyd. Uh, guys, I, I told you that this fight could never happen. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya was the one that was making the fans dream and make it out like Floyd and Canelo could happen again. Uh, he was telling Floyd to come up to 160, but now he, he says the truth about this fight and just basically says that there's no way this fight can happen. Canelo fought at 175. There's no way Canelo could make 154. There's no way Floyd can come up to 160. So the fight between those two is not possible. I've been saying this for a very long time that this rematch is impossible because of weight. And now Oscar De La Hoya says it how it is. Um, I think Canelo probably wanted that rematch because he would he knows that if he was to fight Floyd Mayweather now, he'd beat him. But when he fought him, he was a lot younger. He wasn't as experienced. Floyd was just a master. Uh, Floyd made him come down uh, below 154. But let's not forget, Canelo used to fight. He he wasn't that uncomfortable making those weights at that point. You know, Canelo was a young guy, so he could make weight. Uh, it wasn't that much of a disadvantage. I just think Floyd, even if Floyd went up to 154, I think he would have destroyed Canelo. I don't think the weight played a part. I just think he was a lot better than Canelo. I just think people look to discredit Floyd. Oh, he made him come down. He drained Canelo. He would have beaten Canelo at 154. He was just better than Canelo. Right now, Canelo would beat him, obviously, at 160. But Floyd can't fight at 160. And Canelo can't come down below 160 because it would be dangerous for him. He's just fought at 175 in his last fight. There's no way... That can you know? There's no way that Canelo could make, uh, one five four. It's impossible. His body's just grown out of that kind of weight. So, uh, like I said, I think the fight was always impossible. But but you know, people people love to make these, uh, fantasy fights, kind of fantasy fights, and just dream about it when we've already seen it once. Uh, when the fight was probably possible to be made because Canelo was always going to grow and go into a, a higher weight classes. Um. Whereas Mayweather had reached a limit, he wasn't gonna go into in into you know higher than one four seven. You know, I think Mayweather fought fighting at one five four was a stretch for him. Uh, he fought against Oscar De La Hoya at one five four, and against Canelo he fought at catch weight as well. But Mayweather, Mayweather was at his limit. You know, Canelo was like like I said, he he's fighting at one seven five. So it shows, and he's even talking, talked about fighting at cruiserweight. So it shows how big Canelo is. And Canelo's a thick set. He's a big, big guy. A big, big guy. You know, and he's tough as nails. He's a great boxer. Um, Can Canelo, I think Oscar De La Hoya and Canelo have kind of resigned to the fact that that Floyd Mayweather fight now is, they just need to forget about it. Floyd was just better than Canelo and he beat him. Um, and there's no way that, you know, Canelo can rectify that or he, he there's no way he can redeem himself he's not going to get another fight with Mayweather Mayweather's not that stupid to come out of retirement and fight Canelo uh, especially at 160 where Canelo would be a massive massive favorite the fact that Floyd's way past it and old and Ca Canelo would be fighting at his natural weight which would be silly so the the rematch is is a dream that's not going to happen uh, and I think the reason why it's a dream for a lot of people because they know that Floyd would lose that rematch against Canelo uh, at 160 so it, I, I don't know why people were talking about it but again I think the only reason why people talk about it is because people want to see Floyd Mayweather lose and they know that a rematch against Canelo would there would be a, I, actually I think not a great chance Floyd would lose at 160 against Canelo at this age you know so the rematch would be silly and you know why fight Canelo I don't think he gains much by fighting Mayweather even if he beats him right People will say, well, he beat an old man, you know, so he wouldn't get the credit for it. The only way he would have got credit if he beat him at the time when he fought him the first time, he would have got massive credit for it. it. Would have been passing off the torch, but Mayweather just dominated him and beat him so easily. And at the time, Canelo, people thought Canelo could win that fight. People thought Canelo would win that fight. People thought this Canelo would give Mayweather his uh, Canelo would give Mayweather his first loss, but Mayweather just completely shut him out and dominated him. Um, and he did that, and and he's just like that. Mayweather is just but um, unbelievable like that. You know where where people doubted him in a fight and thought he would lose, he comes out and dominates. That's what Mayweather did throughout his whole career. But leave your thoughts, guys. What do you guys make of what Oscar De La Hoya said? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And guys, remember to please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Guys, what's going on? I hope you guys are well. So. Let's talk about some of the boxing that we had last night. Do a couple of videos on some of the fights that happened. So, Jake Paul destroys Gibb 
in the first round. Um, Gib honestly didn't look too great. Uh, his legs looked quite shaky. I don't know what it was. I don't know whether he was nervous, uh, whether it was just poor technique. I think it was. I think it's a bit of everything. I think he was a bit nervous, a bit of poor technique. I was really impressed with Jake Paul, though. <coughs> I know a lot of people are saying we didn't learn much, but he looked very sharp, very quick, um, and his and his technique looked very good. That's what I always look for when I watch these YouTubers. Uh, I look at their technique, and. He just looked really sharp, very good technically, and he looked better than his brother in the sense that his brother just seemed muscular, but his brother didn't have a lot of end product. Whereas Jake Paul actually looks quite quick and he's quite sharp with his punches, and he looks like he can punch a little bit. I'm not saying he's going to go on to become a top boxer. What what I'm saying is that I think he he definitely can fight a little. He's definitely got he's definitely got some um some some skills. So I I, I think that. I think that J Jake Paul is not a bad bad fighter. Um, I think Gibb was what he was. You could clearly see he was a novice and he didn't uh, he didn't have much skill about him at all. And I think uh, Jake Paul just destroyed him. You know, caught him with a shot. And he every, every as soon as the fight started, you know, Gibb looked out of place, and it was a matter of time before Jake Paul was going to knock him out. I think actually think the referee did him a massive favor. Um, now they're talking about a potential fight. You know, there was a scuffle between. Um, not Gibbs, sorry, uh, KSI and Jake Paul, uh, they're talking about that fight, I actually think a lot of people are giving KSI a lot of credit for that Logan Paul win, it was a decent, good win, um, and I, as a British guy, I would love to see KSI win that fight, but actually, I think Jake Paul wins, I think Jake Paul is very, I think Jake Paul is better than him technically, I think, I, I, and I think Jake Paul probably beats him, if I'm honest, I think I think KSI is quite wild, and I think the way Jake Paul fights, especially what I saw with Gib. Don't get me wrong, KSI is better than Gib. He knows probably knows how to handle pressure a lot better than Gib inside the ring. He's, he'll be a lot more calmer. He's done it before, but I just think he's a lot better than uh, KSI technically. And I think when KSI loads up with those wild shots that we've seen him in the past, I think he, uh, Jake Paul will will catch him and clip him. Uh, and probably stop him, uh, if I'm honest, I think Logan Paul had power, the problem is with Logan, he didn't really throw enough, it was like he was really muscle bound, uh, and every time he would throw, he'd get tired, I, I think Jake Paul's a bit more loose and a little bit more flexible, he's got a little bit more, you know, zip w with those punches, and he's a lot quicker, and I think, I think he beats KSI, if I'm, if I'm honest with you, so I'm not sure whether that would be... Uh, I think it'd make a lot of money. I think it'd be a bigger fight than the Logan Paul fight potentially now because I don't think those two like each other, Paul, uh, Jake Paul and and KSI. Uh, but I think for KSI, I, I don't know whether it's a it's, it's a smart move because I don't think he wins against uh, Jake Paul. I think Jake Paul's a better boxer. I think Jake Paul punches hard, and I think it'd be stylistically. I think KSI's style would play into Jake Paul's. Uh, hands. I think Jake Paul's a, a lot better technically. He's a lot sharper, and I think he'll catch KSI and probably stop him. Um, and KSI is also wild with his punches. You know, you can see his punches coming a mile away. He's really wild. He throws looping shots. Um, technically, not very, the greatest, uh, but he was effective against Logan Paul. I, I'm not so sure he'll be effective against his his brother because his brother looks a lot better boxer to me. If I'm honest, uh, I'm just going on what I saw. Um, you know, there was there wasn't a lot to see, but um, from what they say that Jake Paul before, uh, you know, in sparring and, and and I think he's had a fight before with uh, Deji, which I believe he won as well. Uh, they say he's a decent fighter, and a lot of people were saying that he's actually better than his brother. Uh, and on that showing, he did look better. He looked not just the fact that we didn't see much. There wasn't a lot. He only fought for about two minutes, but technically he looked good. He didn't look bad technically. Uh, that's why I look at technically he looked very good. Uh, whereas KSI looks not great technically. So I, 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 my opinion, a guy that looks good technically and that can box will beat a guy that's wild. Um, and I don't think KSI is a huge puncher, if I'm totally honest with you. But let's wait and see. Um, let's wait and see if this fight gets made. And who do you guys favor if, if that was to ha if this was to be made? Uh, KSI v um, Jake Paul. Leave your thoughts. And guys, remember to please like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. So guys, what's going on? Demetrius Andrade uh, beats Luke Keeler uh, in nine rounds. Stops him. Uh, a lot of people are watching Demetrius Andrade and 
he gets the job done. He's dropped this guy twice. But he's fighting guys at a very low level. He's fighting guys at a very low level. Now, people will take his side and say, well, nobody really wants to fight him. Well, as a fan, what do you want me to do? Like, I can only judge him on what he's fighting. Whether people don't want to get in the ring with him or whatever, I can't... I, I can only judge him on what I see. And listen, he's he's doing well against the guys that he's fighting. Lower level, probably CD level guys. Uh, he's doing well. And I don't know. I don't know how good Demetrius Andre, Andre is. He's a good fighter. I, 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 I think he's a good, good fighter. You can tell he's technically good. And I actually think... I actually... I, I hope Billy Joe... Uh, Andre called out Billy Joe. I hope Billy Joe... Fights... Demetrius Andrade. I think they're both in the same boat. Um, I think I think it makes for a interesting fight. It might not be the most exciting fight in the world because both of them are boxers and they're both southpaws. It's a tricky little fight, but I'll be honest with you. I I'll probably favour Andrade in that fight against Billy Joe. I'd probably favour Andrade. Um, I think. Billy Joe can definitely beat him, but again, Billy Joe's another one where I don't know how good Billy Joe is. It's one of them where both of them are in the same boat. I don't really know how good they, both of them are. They haven't really fought at a very high level. Um, so th the fight with one another would be their toughest match to date. Andre's obviously frustrated. He wants to fight the top level guys again, but there's a lot of things that we need to know about Andre. What about his chin? What about when there's some another guy that's coming to win that's, that's actually very skillful, that can fight? You know, a lot of these guys think that their style is tricky for Canelo. Canelo's a monster. When you get in the ring with Canelo, it's a different ball game. That slick style is different. When he's smashing you to the body and he's punching you very, very hard. Like, these guys haven't been hit as hard as how hard Canelo hits. When you get in the ring with Canelo, it's like every punch is thudding. Uh, it hurts. It takes something away from you every punch that's landing, you know. And Canelo don't waste punches, and he and he, and he can, he's been twelve rounds against top level guys many times, and he's a very good boxer. He's a big puncher, which I don't think either of them are. If I'm honest, I don't think Andre or Billy Joe are big, big, big punchers um, for around those weights. Um, whereas Canelo, he can crack. So again, it's a bit frustrating because I think. It's about time now that the leash is let off Andre and Billy Joe. And if they can't get a fight with Canelo, which I think they all want the Canelo, they want that want that payday, um, fight each other. Fight each other. I do think that it wouldn't make sense for Billy Joe to fight Andre though, however. Even though I'd love to see the fight, I think the fight that if Billy Joe doesn't get Canelo should fight Callum Smith. I think financially, firstly, the fight happens in the UK, right? It's a big fight in the UK between two British guys right itself it probably makes a lot more money i don't know whether billy joe andrade makes a lot of money maybe if the zone are willing to offer good money for it you'd probably be able to get that for you know you'll probably be able to uh, get that fight in america for, for if the zone are willing to put up the money for that fight but however i don't think that does a lot of signups for the zone billy joe v andrade neither guy is not a household names in america uh so is it going to do huge signups i don't know whether the zone are going to be uh, you know, pushing the door down for that fight. I'm not sure. Only Eddie Hearn would know how interested they really are. Uh, but I don't know how interested Eddie Hearn is in making that fight because I think Eddie Hearn may think that there's a fight in the UK uh, between Callum Smith and, and Billy Joe, which probably does better business um, over here. Uh, whether America, whether Dizona are willing to put up the money for that fight, like I said, it does it do a lot of signups? Dizona are burning cash. They're throwing money left, right, center. I think they need to throw it wisely where they know. That's why they're doing these YouTube fights because they know the YouTube will bring a lot of attention and they'll bring up a lot of signups. Whereas a fight, although Billy Joe and Andre is a great fight, how many signups will it do? I'm not sure it does many. So it probably makes more sense for Billy Joe to fight Callum Smith in the UK. I think I think the fight is more sellable here. I think I think it will sell out. I think it could potentially sell out a stadium or definitely the O2 Arena. You know, that's for sure. So, let's see. Let's see what happens. But good win for Andre. What do you think is next for Demetrius Andre? Leave your thoughts. And guys, remember to please like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. So, guys, there was an upset. Jojo Diaz beat Tevin Farmer. In, in an upset, if I'm honest with you. Uh, it was a close fight. Some people thought Farmer won. Uh, 
most people thought Jojo Diaz nicked it. Um, it was one of them. It was a, it was a good fight. Uh, it was definitely a good fight. It was back and back and back and forth stuff. But for, you know, it seemed like Jojo Diaz was outlanding Farmer in quite a, quite a few rounds in that fight. I think Jojo Diaz did a great great job. Uh, Farmer was a guy looking for those big fights. He was looking for big, big fights. And unfortunately for him, those big fights didn't come. He was looking for a fight with Javante Davis. And let's be honest, he would have been a massive underdog against Javante Davis. I think Javante Davis would have, would have beat him, if I'm honest. Um, Tevin Farmer's a good fighter, but I don't think he's elite, elite level. And I think if he if he steps up at that elite level, he'll get beat. Actually, against Jojo Diaz, he's lost and he was a favourite in this fight. So, again, it shows that Farmer's a good fighter, but I don't think he's... I don't think he's at that level to fight those guys. He once said that he wanted to fight Lomachenko. I don't think he's... I don't think he he can compete with those guys, if I'm honest with you. He can compete with them. He can mix it with them. But I don't think he can beat them, if I'm if I'm totally honest. And I think this fight that he had with Jojo Diaz kind of proves that. Now, he's looking for the immediate rematch, which probably makes sense. Because Farmer was looking for those big, massive fights, which now are of are a mile away because he's just got beat and and as Eddie Hearn posted out in or or said after the fight after in an IFL TV interview that Tevin Farmer's his reputation comes by being a world champion his profile comes by being a world champion he's not a big enough name where without belts or without the recognition he can get the big fights you see because he doesn't sell he does. He doesn't. He doesn't sell. You know. He's. A, he's. I'm pretty sure he. He does okay numbers, but he's not like he's a massive star. You know. The fact that they he was being sold is because he's a world champion. Now all of a sudden that's world champion status leaves him. He's just another fighter. Uh, you know. So it's very important for him to rematch Jojo Diaz and beat him because if he loses the rematch, then you know. It's a tough road back for him because, like I said, without him being world champion, um, his profile is not that big at all. And you can't see him getting any big fights. You know, there's certain guys in the sport, like an Amir Khan, guys like that, that have built their name. Even the fact that Amir Khan hasn't been world champion for years, he's managed to get big fights and big profile fights and big money fights because of his name. Don't get me wrong, he was a great fighter when he was fighting and he, he did a lot of great things. But he's got a big name, you know, whereas someone like Tevin Farmer hasn't got a big name. So he needs to be a world champion to attract the the big fights. To, so the guys are like, oh, I'll fight Tevin, Tevin Farmer because it's a unification fight. You know, and that's how Tevin Farmer is going to get the big fights. Think about it. When he was world champion, he couldn't get the big fights. So how's he going to get the big fights if he's not world champion? So it's really important for Tevin Farmer to become world champion again so he's going to rematch Jojo Diaz but I, I don't know if he wins that I think Jojo Diaz might win again I think I think it's a hard fight for Tevin Farmer if I'm totally honest with you they're saying he's struggling to make weight will he move up but again he moves up to 135 there's killers there there's killers there you can't see him doing much at 135 like I said I think that division is is red hot and I don't I don't know whether Tevin Farmer is top seven top eight in that 135 even top 10 you push it there's a lot of talent in that 135 pound division you know, so leave your thoughts, guys. Let me know what you think. And guys, remember to please like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. So guys, what's going on? I hope you guys are well. So guys, there was another upset. Uh, Danny Roman uh, got beat by, I can't pronounce this guy's name, Aklamed, Aklamedev, uh, Marajudun, Aklamed, I can't say his name. But yeah, there was an upset. So Danny Roman loses his IBF and WBA titles. Um, you know, the the guy that Danny Roman was fighting, I can't honestly butcher his name, I can't say his name. Uh, he landed some really heavy shots. It was a very close fight. Split decision win for Danny Roman's opponent. And it was a very good fight. It was a very good fight, end-to-end -end stuff. And as, as, as the judges' scorecard show, it was a very close fight and a great fight. And, you know, Danny Roman ended up losing his, his titles. Now, Danny Roman thought he won the fight. The, the Danny Roman's opponent thought he won the fight. Um, it was one of them type of fights where it could have gone either way. I've seen the reaction online. Some people are saying that Rome, they felt Roman should have got it. Some people said, well, the right man won. Uh, it was one of them fights. It was just a tough, tough fight. 
Um, and these smaller guys, like I've said many, many times before, they never disappoint us. <clears throat> they always go in there and put it all on the line. They put their, they put their you know what on the line all the time. They deserve a lot of credit. These guys don't get paid enough. And they're, they're the ones that generally entertain us more. Uh, you know, I, I will say one thing. The heavier guys of late have really lived up to the hype. They, you know, back five, six years ago, they weren't quite living up to it. But of late, the, the heavier guys have been living up to the hype and we've been getting some great fights. But these little guys from day dot, they've been entertaining us. You know, they've always been giving us great fights. Um, and it's unfortunate for Danny Roman. He's, he's ended up losing. Uh, another upset. There was quite a few upsets last last night. Um, but you know, Danny Roman, uh, he'll come again. I'm pretty sure he'll go for the for a rematch, unless the guy was a mandatory, which I'm not sure, uh, which I don't think he was. Uh, but I think he'll fight Akhlamadev again. Probably he'll get an opportunity to revenge that. But again, that guy's a very good fighter, and we everybody knew before the fight. That Morajudan Akhlamedev, whatever his name is, I can't honestly can't pronounce it, was going to be a very tough fight for Danny Roman. Um, Danny Roman's at 122. Uh, I'm, I, I get excited around these weights because Anuwe's at 118. Uh, I believe Anuwe can, is going to move up to those weights. So all of these guys could be potential opponents for Anuwe. So all of these world champions, all of these guys that are fighting in around these weights, because I believe Anuwe is the superstar in around that weight. I believe he is the superstar. So he's going to be the guy that if any, whoever is the best at 122, whoever's the guy, and he's going to have to fight Anuwe because Anuwe is the man at the lower weight classes. You know, he's the star. Everybody knows no, Anuwe now. And he's the man that, in my opinion, that's going to be taking over. So... All these guys, for me, are an interest in a potential Anuwe fight down the down the road. So, it's you know I, I think Danny Roman needs to exercise that rematch clause. Uh, look to get in the ring with this guy again, see if he can do him. But again, I think I do think this is a tough fight, and I think he may lose again. Uh, I think this guy's very tough, and he's going to be a tough fight again. Um, but leave your thoughts, guys. Let me know what you think. Uh, what did you make of the Danny Roman fight? Um, what do you think Danny Roman needs to do in the rematch in order to get the victory next time? Leave your thoughts. And guys, remember to please like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.